that's a good segue into this Tibbs extension talk, right? Because Stefan Bondi of the, now the New York Post wrote an article last week that spoke on uh, Tibbs. Tibbs' contract, five-year, remember, you've signed a five-year deal, and after next season, the 24-25 season, Bondi made his case that the Knicks should extend Tom Thibodeau's deal. Mm. So the question is, should the Knicks extend Tom Thibodeau now and give him a vote of confidence? What say you? I knew it was going to. I, I know when you're ready to take the lead, like, oh, let me give you my opinion. But when it's a hot topic issue like this, is it Tom Thibodeau or bust type of situation? I'm you're going to throw it to your co host and be like, hey, man, what do you thought of this? I'm just asking the, the hard questions. Pause. I'm just asking the tough ones, man. Okay. Mm. You're just doing your job as conducting. I get it. Yeah. I get yeah. it. Uh, look, I said it on the last post game with Jake. As of right now, I don't know any other coaching candidate, but I- I'm still undecided. W- it, honestly, this season will determine if I would give him an extension or not. You made the playoffs two out of three seasons. I need to see it again. I need to see that this team is like convincing, right? That last year wasn't – because even though I'm coming to this season confident, as we saw with Julius Randle, it flamed out, right? The next season, it was underwhelming. Um, with the offseason moves. Granted, offseason moves, it's just Dante. You move off Toppin, a lot more continuity. I need to see them make it back to the playoffs, and then I'll determine if he should get an extension there. I don't think he should get an extension now. Yeah. Uh, I think if they do anything, it should be at the end of this season to see where the team stands, how competitive they are. But even though I'm in the middle, because as I've said in the past, I think we need a little bit more offensive creativity on this team. You got to give him his respect to where he's put this team and the position they've been in for the last couple of seasons. There's an identity. There's grit. This team was top three in offense last year. This team defensively has like has shown that it can be solid. Uh, you've seen the improvement from Emmanuel quickly from when he was drafted. Quinton Grimes from when he was drafted. You see Julius Randle being an all NBA all-star. Jalen Brunson having one of his best seasons. Granted, I get it goes to the players to put in their work too. But the coach has to put him in a position to succeed as well with his strategy. Look at Mitchell Robinson being in, sh- in foul woes. Much better last season, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and even you can even talk about RJ too as well. You can throw RJ in there. With that right now, I would lean towards, yes, you give him an extension. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying you give it now, but I'm leaning towards that way. Like I said, I need to see how this season plays out. Because you're telling me three out of the four seasons that he's been here, we're a playoff team, competitive. I could say, okay, I understand that because what's the alternative? Who's the next guy out there? And sure, we may not, you may not, may know more than me, CP, because I know you're connected more so than I am uh, what's going around the league. But there's always that candidate too, right? You can go from a Mark Jackson to Steve Curry. You can go from a Dwayne Casey to Nick Nurse who can take it to that next level. That's That's possible, okay? But as of right now, since we don't know who that guy is as a head coach, I'm I'm more so leaning towards you give Tom Tudor an extension Right now, based on the pro- based on the product that he's given yeah. for the New York Knicks, I'll wait one more year. Yeah, let me see what happens this year. I'll wait another year, but I mean, if you're talking about if he makes the playoffs now, three years out of the last four, how could he not? You know, uh, uh, weaknesses aside, every coach has them. But weaknesses aside, if you again pull this thing back, two out of the last three, he's had him in the playoffs. No controversies, no laughing stock. They play respectable. They play hard most nights. And they play in form. And he's withstood a lot, especially last year when they got out to the slow start. Look at Brunson, career year. Randall's had all-star years on the tips. Right? Quickly, sixth man of the year. Look how Mitch is playing. He's, he, there's, he deserves a lot of credit for what he's built and establishing a culture. Is he the guy to get them over the finish line? Is he yet to be determined? Because I'm still a guy that's a coach is coach, play is play. You need that top end guy before you can fully e- evaluate him. I'm not talking about a team that overachieves and, 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 and can get to the Eastern Conference. I'm talking about a team that can legitimately win it. A team that can legitimately win it, you need the guy. It's not coach first. It's the player first. Who's the guy that's going to be a game changer for this team? He's still that guy's still not here. So it's it's difficult to say, well, is he gonna take us over the top? With this team, no, he's not. 
But this team also, to me, is not talented enough to win the whole thing. I think I think any Knicks fan can see that. But looking at it in its totality, number one, he's in lockstep with that front office. He's You might as well say he's part of the front office, even though he doesn't have a title. Family, CP. The term is family. That's it. That's it. Family. Now. You know this, man. You're part of the CAA crew. What are you talking about? He's part of the squad. He's part of the squad. So... Now, now, you might have some detractors in there. Remember, they said that World Wide West almost took the dagger out on them last right. year. So, West could be a wild card, right? West could be a wild card. But I think if they continue to play up to their expectation, they're going to give them a new, a new deal. And probably it'll be at the end of next season. I think they'll and give that's the deal. thing, and, and sorry to cut you off, but that's the thing, CP, is the top-end talent, right? Now, I believe Jalen Brunson... You know, some say he's a rising superstar. I think he is an all-star uh, superstar based on how you drop 40 against one of the toughest defenses against the Miami Heat. You don't just do that, okay? Yeah. There was tape on him all last season. You know what he likes to do. You know he likes to get downhill, how he likes to shoot the ball. It's a seven-game It's a seven game series if it goes that distance. I believe the dude's a superstar. Outside of Brunson, and granted, Randall is all NBA talent. Mm-hmm. Um, I still, We still don't have that guy, man. We still do not have a guy like a Giannis. Or like a step or anything where you say, all right, we have that squad, right? And when you look at teams like the Warriors who have their three who had the three guys, right? Under Mark Jackson, you're like, look, we got Clay, we got Draymond, and we got Steph. We should be doing something over here, right? Even when you look at Nick Nurse, it's like, all right, we got Lowry. Um, they got Kawhi that year, right? When I think it was for Nick Nurse's first season, but still you had DeMar DeRozan. You're like, we have talent on this team. Why aren't we going further than what we're doing right now? And even with Pop, right, with the Spurs, you're like, granted, he had the talent, man. He had the big three over there, there you go. right? And, and I'm looking at it like... And did nothing without him. Have, and if, you, if you're if you looking at a coach that doesn't have a big three, you got to say, all right, well, if we don't have our big three, how can we truly evaluate the full extent of his head coaching? Now, I still think you can offensively. This team, there's things that he can do to make it a little bit more offensively friendly. But when you don't fully have the talent and this team is not championship ready... I also understand and not getting rid of the head coach or something else because you're just not championship ready. So why even make that decision yet? You're a yeah. competitive team. Might as well continue to be a competitive team because you still have that culture. You still have that identity. And he has shown that he can develop talent. So why even move on to something else? And the argument would be, look at Chicago. What has Chicago done after they got rid of Tom Thibodeau? There you go. There you go. That that's that's it. And and look, I I posed this question to to the Knicks fans before. If not him, who? I'm open to the ideas and the suggestions. If anyone can come up with a a viable candidate that could would say that you would say would automatically make this team a contender, a bona fide East contender, a bona fide Eastern Conference finalist. I don't have the answer. That's all. I don't have that. I don't know. I don't have it. Shout out to Triple M saying Johnny Bryant needs his Why? his shine. Why? And, and, and that that's my coach. Shout out to him. Even though again, we'll put our, our issues aside. Why? Why? What what makes him a great coach? But then 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 what we have right now. What makes him the guy that automatically makes us a, a consistent fifty plus winner and an East true contender? Why? Because he's young? Because, because he, he, he works with IQ and all the young guards and Dame and, and, and Donovan Mitchell rate him? Why? What does that mean? I hear that. Like I said, there could be that coach like the Kerr situation, right? Like the Nick Nurse situation where they come in and they can show that they're more than capable, that they can unlock something that hasn't been there. But once again, to me, it comes down to do we have that top 10 elite talent that can just take us there because as you see like and Miami I, I don't even want to, I just hate that yeah. team so much I don't I don't even want to give like Eric Spolstra wizard with the coaching job that he did for Miami and especially for last season um a lot of things fell Miami's way look you have Giannis get a back injury Miami goes on a run uh you know Julius injured Knicks decide to shoot the ball terribly. You get Miami, and they're shooting. And they're shooting fifty percent from downtown. 
unheard of for a team that was dead last in the NBA. All right. There's a lot of things that, 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 that went right for Miami, but we still need that top 10 talent for me to say, you can move on from the head coach to somebody else, to somebody yeah. else. And, and that's, I think for right now, like I said, it could be different. Now, if Tibbs, if they make the playoffs and they get swept and it's a team against the Cavs, right. And the Cavs just come back and they do what, uh, that, what the Knicks did to them last season. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it funny, man. I'm looking that we got to start thinking about making a change yeah. because that means they've identified his weaknesses and now we got to go somewhere different that I'll tell you that right now. But if the same, but if we go to the second round without uh, a top 10 talent, I'm like, I, I really don't have an argument for saying we got to go some, in another direction when we still don't have that top 10 guy on this team that when I see, when I say, okay, the Knicks are championship contenders. Are we competing with Embiid? Even though he's had struggling in the playoffs, are we competing with Giannis? Right. Are we going to compete with Jokic? If we meet them there, are we going to compete even with the Warriors? If we met Steph in the finals. Yeah. I, I don't see that guy on this team yet. Shout out to Jalen in the chat. I like this comment. He says, people like the prize of the unknown more than the good they already have. Mm. <laughs> that was a bar. That's right always greener. That was a bar from, from our, bar. He, he's, he's a young whippersnapper in, in his own right. That was a bar right there. You can say that. You can, I mean, that translates to life itself. That was a bar right there. Some, some wisdom. Yeah. From young Jason. I'll, I'll say this though. Yeah. And I hear my little man in the next room. Yeah. He's behind the studio. I, and my wife's taking care of him right now. Okay. As soon as we talked to as soon as we brought up Tom Thibodeau, he started crying. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's just an omen. Mm -hmm. Something's going on. It's here. tough. Something's going on. It's tough, man. Kids kids don't lie. Kids definitely don't lie. <laughs>